What comes to your mind when I ask, what is the future of artificial intelligence? Some of you may be thinking of Spot, the friendly and adorable robot dog from Boston Dynamics, while others may be thinking of the Terminator, a vicious and deviant robot controlled by a rogue AI. When artificial intelligence is integrated into our daily lives, there are undoubtedly positive and negative impacts that come with it. Good morning, Mr. Hank and friends. Today, my friends and I will be presenting, is the overall impact of artificial intelligence positive or negative? My name is Wilbert, and my fellow colleagues who will be presenting later on are Samuel and Keitora. In this presentation, we will show that there's an overall positive impact of artificial intelligence. As many of you know, artificial intelligence, or AI for short, is capable of mimicking human conversations and relationships. They are frequently found in chatbots that provide customer service, so you may have even interacted with one without realizing it. Although they are not as fluent as we are at conversing, technological advancements that are made every day contribute to improving the skill. With this ability, artificial intelligence has revolutionized the face of customer service and relationship management, mainly by introducing chatbots. Some of the pros of adopting artificial intelligence to customer service and relationship management include the following. First, AI can make faster decisions. While humans may overanalyze various factors and outcomes when making a decision, an AI is able to make decisions faster and carry out actions faster. This allows companies to deliver smarter, more personalized, and predictive experience to customers. Second, AIs are available 24-7. AIs are constantly available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Unlike humans, AI do not require breaks nor sleep, meaning that they can work endlessly and are available to help customers from different time zones. Furthermore, AI also does not get bored or lose interest when doing their repetitive task. This fact alone means that AI are able to spend more time working rather than resting. Third, AI reduces human error. Humans are extremely prone to making mistakes and errors in everyday lives. AI, however, consists of lines of codes and programming. This means that there's a very low chance of an AI making an error if its programming was done correctly. Decisions made by AI are also taken from previously gathered information about the customer and by applying a certain set of algorithms on this data, errors can be reduced. However, some critics still to this day bring up the ethical issues of adopting AI to workplaces, the main argument being unemployment. As AI seeks to replace a majority of the jobs, including occupations that involve repetitive tasks and occupations that do not require a high level of social or emotional intelligence, people are afraid that AI will cause a widespread loss of jobs. Although this is not entirely false, as AI will undoubtedly cause a loss of some jobs, the largest change caused by AI is the increase in the demand for skills that involve human creativity, subjective judgment, and craftsmanship. These are only a few examples of skills that an AI cannot offer better than a human can, or at least for now. In addition, the introduction of AI also creates a new wave of demand for jobs that are related to the research and development of AI such as machine learning engineers and robotics engineer. Considering all the pros and cons, it is evident that there is greater positive impact of artificial intelligence than there is negative impact. So that's how artificial intelligence has revolutionized customer service and relationship management with their use of chatbots. Now Samuel, one of my colleagues, will present the use of AI in self-driving cars. Thank you, Wilbert, for your amazing presentation and yes, I will be discussing the main issues of self-driving cars. Hi, my name is Samuel Lim, and now I would like to discuss regarding the main aspects of self-driving cars, either they are right or are they wrong. But before continuing to my presentation, I would like you guys to imagine a situation where you are driving a self-driving car in the year 2030. All of a sudden, the car experiences a mechanical failure and is unable to stop. If this continues to happen, the car will crash onto a bunch of pedestrians on the street. You only have two ways to get to your destination. First is the left side of the street, and second is the right side of the street. On the left side of the street, you can see five people just normally walking on a day-to-day -day basis. And on the right side of the street, you can only see one person just normally walking as well. On that kind of situation, what will you rightfully choose? As a human being with moral beliefs, we will definitely choose to kill that one person to save five lives. Most of us will choose like that. And also there are statistics that also prove that. 
A 2009 survey by David Borgay and David Chalmers shows that 69.9% of professional philosophers would switch, meaning sacrifice the one individual to save five lives. In the case of the trolley problem, 8% would not switch, and the remaining 24% had neither view or could not answer. However, we could never reach a conclusion to killing that one person on the right side of the street. Because what if that one person is an old lady or a pregnant mother? Our choices will change based on different cases presented to us. Many of you guys might be thinking, what if we code the car into no harm should be intended to human? It could definitely be an idea to keep in mind. However, if a situation like this were to happen, it does not make sense that the car would drive straight towards the side of the street and kill the passengers inside the car. As people buy these types of cars to protect them and not to kill them in dilemmas such as this. Even though these dilemmas should be considered, it is you shouldn't worry about buying self-driving cars because it is very unlikely that the trolley problem will occur on our lives and there are much more benefits you can obtain when using self-driving cars. The benefits will be presented in the future slides. This scenario was actually inspired by the philosopher Philippa Foot, an English philosopher which is credited in introducing her original version of the trolley problem in 1967. You guys might be thinking, hey Sam, why should we buy self-driving cars if there are such dilemmas like this we cannot do? Yeah, so why should we buy self-driving cars? There are actually more benefits of buying self-driving cars than just buying a normal car. First, it will reduce accident fatalities. According to the blog David Gordon Law, it could reduce up to 90% in the US alone as 94% of the time car accidents happen because of human error. And Basically, if you're buying self-driving cars, you are indirectly saving other people's lives from car accidents. We can take an example of Tesla's advanced self-driving cars, which currently they are holding the most advanced self-driving cars in the world. So basically, the Tesla self-driving cars, they have these sensors and cameras around their car, which allows their car to make continuously thousands of decisions in real time and upload them into a big data server. This big data server will then continuously getting better and better over time, which leads to a lower societal cost. This leads me to my second reason on why you should buy self-driving cars, which is a lower societal cost. What is a lower societal cost? A lower societal cost is when the government needs to pay money to fix or repair issues of the society, such as car crashes, damages on the roads, um, damages on the street, and damages on the infrastructure, and many more. And a lower social cost will lead into a better healthcare system, a more efficient transportation, and a better fuel saving as well. These cars, or also using renewable energy, leads me to my third reason. These cars, they are using the electricity renewable energy. Therefore, less fossil fuels, fuels are burned and less pollution were given out as well. Lately, researchers are not focusing on the solutions to these types of problem, but they're trying to make a self-driving car which minimizes harm as much as possible. In conclusion, we can never satisfy everyone's moral perspective. However, we can make self-driving cars advantageous but if people buy them. From these given examples and explanations, it is evident that buying self-driving cars is much more beneficial than the consequences you get from self-driving cars. So that wraps up the presentation regarding issues of self-driving cars and next, I'll be handing over my presentation to Pitora, where he will be discussing the importance of AI researchers learning ethics and why establishing an AI code of ethics will be harder than what most people think. Thank you, Sam. Hi, my name is Pitora. Today, I'll be talking about two topics. The first topic would be about why AI researchers must learn about ethics. And the second topic would be why establishing an ethics code of AI would be harder than we think for AI. 
Cont uh, be first of all, I'll be providing you with some context so it's much easier to comprehend the information that I'm saying. Uh, basically, more than 100 tech pioneers sent an open letter to the UN talking about murderous robots or autonomous lethal weapons. In the letter, they provided an example. An example were delivery drones. These delivery drones would cause benefits and disbenefits in our life. The benefits would be convenience and transport of packages and also making sure the packages arrive in good condition now this benefits would also cause this benefits since it is also allowing people to transport bad goods such as guns drugs and whatever that thing is now there's a specific term for this type of a uh, situation which is called the double effect where something good and something bad happens now Back to the letter, the tech pioneers basically begged the UN to find a solution. Now, the solution provided were T-shaped people. T-shaped uh, people are people with a, sp a specific area of technical depth, the vertical stroke of the T, and, and professional skills and personal qualities, the horizontal stroke of the T. With this, they are able to see different perspectives from a problem and work in work effectively in multidisciplinary teams to provide a solution. On to the second topic, you must be wondering why is it actually hard establishing an AI code of ethics for, yeah. Well, it is hard because ethics vary from person to person. Everyone has a different definition for ethics. An example of this would be the NYPD compiling a database of, of names and personal details of 17,500 individuals who are allegedly involved in criminal gangs. Uh, this, They were using facial recognitions to uh, identify each individuals, but the problem is 95 to 99% were African American, Latino, and Asian American. This could mean that the facial recognition system used was a racist now there are also some benefits of using facial recognition systems basically the US U UK and China are using these facial recognition systems to identify existing criminals thus creating a better and safer society a solution provided to the problem mentioned above was provided by Philip Alston and the data and society research Institute Institute basically stating that if an AI takes away people's basic rights Then it should not exist To sum up everything even though the improvement of AI would cause some disbenefits Our group still thinks that the benefits would outweigh them thus concluding the overall impact of AI positive Now are there any questions? I hope not If not, thank you for listening to our presentation. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye